This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Our Lifestyle, the podcast brought to you by Sparkles Detail. Visit sparklesdetail.com in order today or have the clean team that supports the scene detail your ride at any event that they're in attendance. Also, Custom Car Show Productions. That includes Orange Beach Invasion, Scraping the Coast, Bayou Showdown, and Sicknick. Make sure you follow Orange Beach Invasion, Scraping the Coast, and Bayou Showdown on Instagram. These events also can be found on Facebook with much more details. Make sure you tell them our lifestyle the podcast sent you. I'm prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's gonna go get it. No kidding. Breaking down a switch in front of your building. Sitting on the steps, feeling no feelings. Yo, 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 yo. It's our lifestyle of a podcast, episode 117. Got a little bit of a special edition. I guess we could call it Mini Truckin' Motherfucking Monday on April Fool's Day of all days. But there's no April Fool's here. Got the big homie, not Miggity Mike the Mayor, but we got Ruben Artiega. How's it going, brother? Oh, man, I'm doing good, Jay. How are you, buddy? Man, life is good. Everything is good, man. I did want to just remind everyone, make sure you uh, search Scraping the Coast on Google or Facebook. Uh, as Mike would say, the book face. You can land on scrapingthecoast.com. That website there is the official page of the wildest car, truck, and bike show on the coast. And don't forget to follow them on Instagram. Most importantly, make sure you find the Facebook event page and select that you're going that way you'll receive updates to one of the biggest and baddest shows around also big ups to sparkles detail visit sparklesdetail.com and order some Croftgate products so ruben we got a lot to talk about man you know some people are probably wondering you know what's up with the special edition podcast man i had a lot to talk about that was on my mind i hit you up and you just got back from where man i just got back from forbidden and uh let me tell you the obvious is jumping this year you know every year it gets a little better i i think uh i think this year was the best by far dude we got a lot to talk about in terms of the show i'll remind everyone fff underscore show on instagram that's the official forbidden fantasy show Now, I'll also remind folks, make sure you use the hashtags. I was using FFF2019, but if you look in their bio, they're primarily uh, uh, pushing FFF Show 2019. So hashtag the photos. Uh, If you follow those hashtags, you'll also see the posts. So what would you say, Ruben, stuck out in your head the most with Forbidden Fantasy 2019? Well, I'll I'll tell you what. I mean... um for me personally, this was the first event that I ever took my son Jacob to. It was a three-day event, let's say. And, okay. Um, I was, you know what, man? I'm not going to lie. As a dad, I was a little, I'm not going to say hesitant, but I was a little nervous. But, um, man, the kid had a blast. The kid hung in there. And um, he he really, really liked it. And um, I, 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 think, uh, I, I think we got a lifer here. You know, I think we... We, we struck a chord in him and um other than that i mean that was me personally and but but the show again the the guys and gals from forbidden from that club man they man they it, it almost looks like like they're it's just like second nature to them you know they could probably do it blindfolded with their hands <laughs> tied behind their back i mean it's that it's that great of an event if you haven't been please you know do yourself a favor and and start thinking about it because it definitely is one of the in my opinion one of the best shows out there the vehicles i mean some of the stuff out there is just insanely it is just insane and um you know a lot of the the, you know the people as well i mean the people are great the crowds are great the obvious wonderful they treat us great i mean what more can we ask for 
you know, no more sleeping in tents, not at this event. You're, you got a hotel room, you know, and if you were lucky enough to get one there, I mean, go hang out for a little bit, go up to your room, chill out for a little bit, go back down. You know, I mean, it's it's a win-win for everyone. Hails to the yeah, brother. What stuck out in my mind is a lot of people were tagging Forbidden Fantasy underscore or FFF underscore show on Instagram. The big homie NR underscore Carl, former guest, great dude. Tell me your mind wasn't blown when you saw him repping Topper Gang, man. He threw a camper show on it. What? Oh, you know what? He pulled a Ruben Arteaga move from back from the mid <laughs> You know, I I was I was in shock because I I'd been busy the night before and kind of I was on social media but not much and um, I didn't see it until I walked out there and I saw it and you know it, it's Carl's truck is one of those trucks that in my opinion the internet social media pictures whatever it doesn't do it justice. You have to go up to this truck and just start looking. And you'll see little things. And um, I saw it with the with, with the shell with the topper, and I was I was kind of, it kind of like I said it took me back like when I put the, the shell on my Toyota back in in the mid nineties. And um, not only did he put that shell on, but he changed a couple little details here and there. And it's stuff that I noticed. And um, I've 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 had the pleasure of talking to Carl a couple times and. You know, he's got that mindset. He's like, you know, I, I don't have to redo the whole thing, but, you know, I just got to sharpen the, you know, sharpen the edges here and then, you know, fine tune it. And, man, that that was my, my favorite truck of the show, you know, hands down, hands down. Yeah, he, he's got a winner there. Good job, Carl. Yeah, he's a great guy, man. He really is. I keep in contact with him all the time. And, you know, I'm glad he didn't share that too early with me because he knows uh, it's hard for me to keep a secret, man. But, uh in all seriousness, it looked damn good. I love the inside of the bed. I've seen a few different outlets post it. I've got a cool little video that he had sent me, so I'm going to post that one up as well. Uh, really good dude overall. Now, the other truck that stuck out, and you'll probably remember this one, he's a petitioning ST member, and um, it looks like Flo had posted it up, Jeff, and uh, I haven't met him in person. His last name is uh P-O-P-I-O-L-E-K. From what I understand, he won Best of Show, and that's pretty amazing. It uh, reinforces that minis are on the rise. The truck looked good. No doubt. Yeah, and he flipped it up with the paint color, it looks like. Yeah, no doubt. I was actually um, I was at the flow booth yesterday, and I, I, I walked around the truck, and very clean, very clean detailed i mean beautiful truck and well deserved well deserved on best of show and that best of show award and that trophy it was off the chain man it was it was crazy you know it was crazy and um to win something like that at a show like that i mean you know the truck is well deserved of it definitely and you know what I love about a show is when people will use the hashtags or they'll tag that particular show. So when you go to FFF underscore show, you've got in the middle on Instagram, you've got the three menu uh, kind of buttons that I call them. Uh, the third one over is the one where it shows you anyone that's been tagged. And you have, you know, like mini truck underscore dudes. We're tagging them underground style dot US, which is the big homie over here, Mitch in Florida. Uh, then you had just you know just regular guys, man, that were out there. Uh, AZ Chevy parts. Uh, you got Apaches C tens. You got um, just so many different vehicles, man. Billet, Chrome wheels, bicycles out there. No regrets. Severed ties. All the big clubs repping. The weather looked amazing. What would you say overall was maybe a highlight of the weekend? A any kind of good shenanigans going on, Ruben? Uh, but, you know, I, I kind of had to watch my P's and Q's with uh, <laughs> there you my go. little dude there, you know, but, uh, uh, oh man, I, you know what, it, it's like I said, you know, those guys can, those guys could probably pull the show off with their, you know, hands tied behind their back blindfolded. They make it look so effortlessly or so easy. And, uh, I, um, uh, I, 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 I don't know. It is just a perfect event. It was got a little breezy here and there, but. But be honest with you, that breeze kept the temperatures down. You know, uh, that part of the country, that part of the desert, if it wasn't for that breeze, it would have easily been about 10 degrees warmer. Not 
Me personally, getting to see some of my friends that I only see, you know, a couple times a year because of where we all live. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's just a great event. I mean, it's one of my favorites. And um, I don't know, you know what, to, to just pinpoint one part of it. Um, I don't know. It, it, you know, it, the the whole atmosphere of that show, you know, you have you have the show during the day, during the morning. But yet in the evening, you know, when it's, you know, the pretty much the show is kind of somewhat over, you still have the opportunity of walking the grounds out there next to the next to the river. So, you know, we we've always done that and we've always, you know, um, you know, we'll grab a cocktail and we'll walk out there and, you know, there'll be clubs partying, kicking back. And but to go out there and look at the vehicles at night and just it gives it a different perspective. It gives it a different feel. And, you know, not a lot of shows will do that. You know, once the show is over, they kind of kick you out and, mm -hmm. you know, don't want you anywhere. But I mean, they, you know, there's people out there blasting music and having a good time. And, you know, you're running into friends and talking to people, you know, and meeting new friends and whatnot. And it just, I don't know, it gives it a whole, it gives it a whole different vibe in the evening, let alone, you know, you got the casino and whatnot. But Def yeah, man, that's, Definitely a good one. Definitely. Something else that stuck out in my mind is, I don't know if Carl posted a photo, but a video that he had sent me of his truck, you mentioned, like you know, we've seen this rise of different night shows. Not saying that we've never seen those, but I think there's going to be a continued influx. Obviously, you know, like Mini Madness for a long time has been doing, like, doing it in the dark. Then you had, you know, we have After Dark. Then you've got other shows like that. But Vic and I were talking the other day, like about the lifted trucks. A lot of the lifted guys have lighting. I saw, you know, Carl in the bed of the S10 in the video. He's got lighting in there, so like the nighttime adds that other aspect. I mean, hell, we saw Dave Shulman driving his uh, F350 Precious Metal. We saw a video of that the other day with some real cool lighting, and it's almost—I hate to say—like reminiscent of the neon era. Because, you know, neons for a long time, like Florida was known as, oh, you know, they're all the neon guys down there. But, you know, the lighting aspect of vehicles, man, with LEDs and things like that and some of these different halo lights, to your point, Ruben, it really adds a whole other aspect to the show. Yeah, it, it really does. And I do, I do see, you know, maybe not so much the neon stuff, but with LED technology that, that we have available to us now, I, I see that. I see people, you know, going a little bit more that route as far as you know maybe leds and strategically placed locations in the engine compartment or undercarriage let's just show off at you know at events like this you know and and the destination event i mean to me it's you know greg miller's got um the show that was just last week orange beach um, invasion right orange beach invasion and you know the the pictures at night i mean it's like i said you have one you, you you have this one um, feel during the day, but, you know, when the lights go on at night and then, you know, the shadows and stuff, and it just gives it a whole different vibe to me. And, and I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Yeah, at least I hope so, because I enjoy it. Years ago, talking to Brian, was it Brian? Or I think it was no, some of the Severed guys, and they were saying, like, for instance, like Art of Noise, when they put their show on, isn't it like June and... And one of the old school OGs was like, man, it's like almost you don't even realize, like, why are we doing this in June? Because it's like you get to the show, you leave the car running, you sit in your car the whole time. So, you know, to your point, some of these summer months get very, very warm, and it is nice to be able to cool off. I remember when NASCAR first started doing these different races under the lights. Like, I think they've done the Daytona race a couple times like that, and it brings a whole other aspect because one, you got the lighting, so it's but it's number one, it's much cooler. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, right. And you know, um, it, it got it did get a little chilly. Um, it did get a little chilly last night. I had to borrow a hoodie from Chris Burns, you know, and but um, you know, I don't know. I mean, the nights I, I love shows like that where where you're able to go do stuff. And when I had the Toyota and I was showing that, I love. I love cruise nights, you know, anything at in the dark, for some reason, it gave it a different vibe. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I liked it. It's different. Yeah. It's good times for sure. Another thing that I thought was pretty badass, and you sent this to me on your way there, you know, you, uh, you're like, yo, Jay, I'm gonna hit you with some photos. So we've got a lot that we'll share all week, but how cool was it to see truly middies on the rise 
a fucking mini truck on a billboard, and it's uh the homie BioPrez BD toy on Instagram. Dude, that was badass for the Avi Resort and Casino billboard. Now it, it was, and now I'm driving. Okay, we we get off that main little strip right there on on in the, on the Arizona side in Bullhead City, and you turn onto that road to go over the bridge, and maybe half a mile down or so, there's this billboard, and I'm driving. I'm like, Shree, get a picture, get a picture. And so I've started. I'm in the <laughs> brakes and stuff, and you know she's grabbing her phone, you know, trying to get it up, and we just. I mean, we caught it perfect, but yeah, I mean, the Avi does, does go out and they do take care of us. And a lot of the pictures that I had posted, and I, I posted FFF 2019 and Avi actually went and liked them. So, I mean, they're I actually, know, they're same. paying attention, you know? Yeah. yeah. That, isn't that great? I thought you know, it was cool uh, because I even tagged them, but you know, they were seeing the hashtags they're engaged with. You know, realizing that, hey, you know, we're mini truckers, we're coming in town, we're spending money, we've got, uh, you know, some, obviously it's a casino, you got some gambling going on, so, I mean, fantastic A+. plus. It's great that the whole Forbidden crew and Brian and his team, that they can really create those partnerships. I was talking to someone recently, and, and we mentioned, I think it was uh, actually last episode, it was Robbie from Keg Media. And we mentioned like how far the mini truck scene has come, whether it's the lifted guys, the full size, or the mini guys. You know, we went from having shows at flea markets and swap meet type events, and there's nothing wrong with that. But to see something like the wharf with Orange Beach, Avi Resort and Casino with Forbidden, it really shows how far that we've come, man. Oh, we've come a long way. I mean, from uh, I remember going to a show, and I believe it was in Riverside, where it was a uh, like an industrial complex and everyone's got their stuff set up and all of a sudden security shows up and we oh have boy. to believe, you know, it was one of those deals, but yeah, man, we, we've come a long way and, and I've made, I've made the wise crack of, you know, if this was us, you know, 30 years ago, they'd have the SWAT team out of the building. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we, we have grown up and, and um, I'm glad to see that, that us as a whole, that we're there, that we can have these events and, you know, everyone, you know, everyone's older, everyone behaves well. And even, you know, the younger guys, the younger guys are, are, are seeing that example that the older people are setting. And I like it. I dig it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm not, you know, I, I love it. Definitely. So being on the East coast, one thing that, you know, the homies and I, back in the day, we always were quick to see who was going to get the show coverage up first. And in this social media world, arguably, you know, a lot of us, we take great photos with our iPhones and we post them. Uh, we post, you know, albums or we kind of trickle them in through Instagram that link over to Facebook. But one of the guys that has remained on top, and we've got to have him on the podcast at some point, is Mr. Brian Frost, I think is how you pronounce his last name, with SoCal Customs. And dude, I went there just before we got on the phone, Ruben, and lo and behold, what coverage do you think he has up, man? Oh, for sure. You know, dude. forbidden. Yeah, forbidden he's, 2019. Yeah, real good dude. And, you know, what's funny is, you know, the West Coast guys will know this. Some of the East will. Uh, for those, uh, excuse me, that have never been on truckrun.net, T-R-U-C-K run.net, that's an old school West Coast page. And they also have an Instagram page, which is truckrun.dot net all spelled out it uh you can link there for their bio now he actually posted a couple of photos from forbidden which i found because of the hashtag and then i've since went to his page and he hasn't posted yet but he did allude that you know over the next week or so he's anticipating having those up but for now i tell everyone you know kind of the official first guy that i've seen uh up is the uh, socalcustoms.com and boy, man, like, you know, I, I see uh, Acro Vix truck here, which is the Tahoe with the super sick interior in it. I mean, just That's so many badass Tahoe. trucks. Yeah. And Mike and I just talked about the whole professional photographer. Like, Brian has covers under his belt, so many features. His photos are really, really, really high quality. His whole entire site is pretty top notch. I mean, you know, and even at SEMA, the, the coverage that he does for at SEMA. I mean, every night, mm -hmm. I mean, it's up. Whatever he shot, you know, throughout that day is, is up right away. He's always been on top of that. And, um, again, we're fortunate enough to have people like that to take time, 
you know, out of their lives to, to want to do this. I agree. Yeah. Now, what do you know about, uh, we haven't talked about this club a lot, but Flojos, I think is how you pronounce it, F-L-O-J-O-S. Like, I'm looking at the photo on SoCal Customs. Dude, like the Forerunner, they've got the blue Toyota, and I don't know if the purple S10 next to it is rolling with them, but the two trucks, I see the logos on the back. Dude, that's a good old freaking club right there, man. And those guys have been doing it a long time, from my understanding. They, as a matter of fact, they've been doing a very long time. This past uh, this past SEMA, that club was inducted into the Hall of Fame. That's so, what I remember um, from the from their web from the uh, the Matrock Hall of Fame website. Yes, um, you know, and, and that's one of those clubs that you know they uh, they are in everything and anything, and, and very very good quality rides. Uh, I don't think I've been fortunate enough to meet anyone from that club, but, you know, I know I will, and, and you know, they did have some nice rides out there. So, in the last episode, we had Robbie, and Robbie kind of mentioned when I asked him, hey, what do you foresee maybe in the next 10 years? And he kind of, you know, hit me by surprise. He mentioned, you know, maybe even the car scene coming back, and, you know, you could kind of split that up and kind of say, well, talking about hot rods, talking about the Euro type deals, but... When you when I'm on looking at the show coverage, there was like a blue Civic there that was really reminiscent of the early 2000s for me. You had the whole dash was blue. I want to say it had the BAD billet wheels on it with a matching steering wheel. I mean, dude. And then you sent me the I think it was an orange Civic. And at first I was like, wait a minute, is this bad Apple? Of course, that car was green back then. But dude, tell us a little bit about some of the other kind of players that you saw there in terms of like those rides. Well, the the Honda that was in front of the main doors as um, as you walk in, I mean, uh, Forbidden always puts one of their 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 club vehicles there, and uh, I believe that car just got done. Basically, it's got all hydraulics underneath it. And, um, it had that had that vibe that um, 2000 subcompact vibe, and 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 you know, if if you really think about it, I mean, with um, the minis on the rise. Yes. I mean, what came after those, those sport compacts on the, so, rise. Um, on the rise, buddy, let me tell you, I mean, and there were a handful of them. There were quite a few of them. And, but that I believe, you know, that in the, in the future, we will be seeing those cars. And then, you know, of course I love the CTSs and the CTSVs. I, I love those. And hopefully one of these days I build one, but you know, there were a handful of those and, um, there are a couple of Mercedes there and, uh, you know, laid out. And I, I, I can honestly see that if, if it follows the same transition that we've been following, I could see, you know, I could see the sport compact cars come in and the full size luxury cars come in. It, it's, you know, it's only natural. It definitely is. And some of those old school guys, they'll remember the, uh, the badass car uh, named bad apple. We posted that a long time ago. It was a green car. It was unbelievable, but I really, uh, have always enjoyed those type of cars, even back when Low Life, no, it was uh, Domination. You know, he would do the features and maybe Low Life Mikey as well. But there was always like a mainstay of those subcompact cars there. And uh, it was really a big thing. And then, of course, Mini Truck, and it was really cool that they started featuring those rides. So I definitely thought that was, uh, that was you know, that kind of stood out to me. I did want to um, mention too, like when I look at the show field, it was a good mixture of, we talked about the subcompacts, you had minis, you had full-size trucks, you had Juan from Severed out there, SoCal, his 300C, obviously it's orange, I mean, fantastic. I mean, you just had a plethora of different vehicles, and it still maintained that mini truck and vibe is the way I see it. Oh, it really did. I mean, whatever, you know, again, they do a... a Brian and the crew do a, a wonderful job at the show. And um, I mean, there was just some, there's some, uh, some awesome stuff out there. There was a chopped um, square body, you know, with a, I believe it had a 409 in it. And um, I, I didn't see, I, I don't know why, maybe because my sunglasses or whatever, but it was, it was a pearl white paint job. And at night you could really see that pearl popping with the, uh, with all the street lights and stuff that they had out there. But I mean, there was, you know, everywhere you turned, you saw something that would catch your eye. There was a brand new Silverado out there that was bagged and bodied. I mean, you know, I mean, full sizes, 
and um you know there was a couple of uh of uh c1500s out there that that body style and, and it's just whatever you are into and, and my son jacob um his favorite truck was that white 3100, that five window, with yes. the black wheels. Yeah. You know, we kept talking about back there. Dad, Dad, I really like this. This is so cool. And, you know, here's a kid that, you know, he's into the skylines and all the, you know, all the Japanese stuff and the high dollar European stuff. And, but him, for him, for that to catch his eye, I mean, that kind of says something about the caliber of stuff that's there. It does. And, uh, on the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about doing it in the dark with the big homie Graham, right? So uh, you want to make sure on Instagram you're following the Mini Madness uh, Instagram page, the official handle of Mini Madness Club. Uh, just type in Mini Madness uh, sep- uh, separate there. You'll see Mini Madness Inc. Now, he is uh, dedicated to the scene. Graham really is. And, of course, he was there in the famous Titan Dually. Interior was looking super fresh. Did you get a chance to check it out? I did. I did. I, I, I walked by it during the day, and, and, and of course, I mean, the crowds are kind of kind of crazy, and I got a chance to go later on uh, yesterday, or last night, rather, and, I mean, it's a beautiful truck. I mean, I remember, um, I remember the truck, seeing the truck in different stages, and, I mean, it is a beautiful truck. I mean, the interior in it is, is, is awesome. I mean, uh, hats off to the builders and everyone that had a part of that and um you know and he drives it he does <laughs> i know. know and he's kind of he's been hinting at some big things to come wink wink and i'm super stoked for whatever he's got brewing there was another truck that stood out to me which was i don't know an early 2000 silverado it was white it had some crazy 4g auto wheels on it i think it had a sunroof but it had these like graphics that were just reminiscent of like a good mix between some lowrider type graphics and mini truck type graphics. And it was parked next to a four door red Colorado. Did you happen to see that truck? I actually, I think I believe I sent you a picture of it. I, I did. It had did. all the patterns. It had all the patterns. And I think that's what caught my eye because I remember walking by it and uh, the first, the first lap around, there was like just so many people. And then, I was able to snap a picture of it, and later on when we got back in the room, I was going through my photos, and uh, it was one of the one of the trucks that I kind of stopped at, and I started looking at. It. And there's a lot of detail there, you know. Those paint jobs are just, I mean, it, it's labor intensive, but yeah, it was a beautiful truck. Yeah, it was. The other truck that I thought was cool is, let's see here. Oh, there was a lifted Toyota. So you talk about minis. Mike and I were talking about this the other day. On the rise, for real. There's another page that I want to just kind of mention. If you type in monster mini trucks on Instagram, this is like the perfect example of what this guy would share. He's an old school mini trucker. But dude, you know, before we started recording, Ruben, you know, you and I talked a little bit about, you You brought up Cal Truck Jam. And you guys know that I've never got a chance to go to it, but I always look at videos or photos from that show and it just had like a badass vibe, dude. So many when you know back when crew cut, uh, I think before uh, when it was West Side. I remember seeing photos of it there and the show coverage and mags. But to see this Toyota that's red with the graphics and kind of the two tone, it had the cab visor. And dude, this thing was sky, dude. I mean, towering with bags, triple convoluted bags. And Robbie and I were just talking about that last week. Yeah, I, I want to say I, I again I, I I believe I took pictures of them in front of you. That truck is probably eye level. The the rocker was probably eye level to me, and it just it it did take me back of of you know back to the to the early eighty or early early nineties of clubs like High Country. High Country was a club out here in, in or out in California, and they had nothing but but super lifted minis like that it, it did have that feel to it and you know i would love to see more of those trucks i mean because they got to be out there you know? yeah they, they they definitely they, they got to be out there and uh mike and i got some some things up our sleeve and um you know hopefully we could bring a little bit more of that content to you guys as well uh, i did want to just stop for a moment and say make sure you visit hammered weekend wear that's h-a-m-m-e-r-d weekendwear.com the big homie, Riggedy Ron Perkins, was out there. I shared a pretty cool photo of him on my Lincoln Addict 
uh, Instagram page that links over to Facebook as well. You know, Ron was there, and he had teased me a little bit. I think a 65 vert. Uh, Brian from uh, uh, SoCal, he also had posted this uh, photo of it. But a, a really badass Lincoln convertible. And Ron had this, like, uh, epic photo that he took in front of it, a little selfie. But, you know, Ron was out there, and my understanding is you got a chance to slap hands with the man? Yeah, I did, actually. We had gone back up to the room, and um, it was mid day yesterday and it was we were kind of a little tired and whatnot so we decided to go back up to the room and get in the room and she's like you know what i'll be right back i'm gonna go grab some ice and then she comes back she's like look who i found and, <laughs> look who uh, walked in the door <laughs> look who look who i found it uh i knew he was going to be out there but i didn't know kelly was going to be out there kelly's wife and uh we sat in the room kind of reminisced i i love them they're one of my closest friends and uh I hadn't seen her and it'd been a minute, you know, and um, they hadn't seen Jacob since he was like a little, a little, little kid. So it, it was great to catch up with him and, and, and spend time with them both and kind of just, you know, hang out with my friends, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, he is uh, he's definitely on the rise. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. You said it best. If you go to hammered com and you hover over shop, Make sure you get in on the Hammered Weekend Wear, the OG shirt featuring Phil Fowler. And then, of course, he's got the Van Hammered shirt, which we talked a little bit about on the last episode. Now, All Time Low Magazine, or ATLmagazine.com, they stay on the rise. And I hinted recently that we're going to team up with them. We've got everything kind of preliminarily uh, sent over. I'm not sure if it's going to make the cut for the next episode, but we will have your friend... Travis Nowak and previous guest as the first written interview, we get a chance to really touch base on some different trends, including graphics that came out of the 90s and how they still continue to live on, which is, of course, hashtag Cal Concepts. That's K-A-L and then Concepts with a K. So how cool is it that uh, Travis Nowak, man, the, I'll say it like this, the print media legend in the whole truck scene that will have him in another print magazine, which is atlmagazine.com. Oh, that is awesome. I mean, it's going to give, I mean, it's going to give him the opportunity to tell even, you know, more stories, go into other details and um, definitely a great guy. And another, another person I got to see this weekend and uh, kind of hang out and talk. And again, I hadn't seen him since, uh, since SEMA, since actually the Hall of Fame night, I think I saw him for maybe five minutes. And I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab a drink. And, yeah, that was it. But definitely Travis is 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 just uh, a load of information that guy's had. He was there. He did it. He wrote about it. And now it's going to be, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to, to be an all-time low and write about it there. Hells, yeah. And this is, um, you know, the, I'm looking forward to it then we'll have a different interview each of those six issues per year. Now, this is straight from Brian Good. You're always in good hands with Brian. Don't forget he runs Grinder TV as well, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube and uh, follow them on Instagram. But, you know, he basically, he and I were texting just a short period ago. They look at it as a huge success as a club. They want to thank all the sponsors and all the participants and he basically said, look, everything seemed like it was a blast. Uh, not, not you know, Borat usually, or uh, the Ali G normally says, uh, so far everything is illegal. But uh, he said, uh, Brian goes, no, I rest assured everything was legal at Forbidden Fantasy 2019, which is always a good thing, man. Yeah, definitely a good time. I, I can't wait for next year. I mean, you know, um, it, and, and I know Jacob, Jacob was already asking, you know, uh, you know, maybe next year we'll have your truck and we'll be able to take your truck and, you know, you know, hopefully we'll see, but yeah, I can't wait for next year. Definitely. Definitely. Like I said before, this is one of my favorite events. And if anyone asks, this is the event you need to plan for. Yeah. They hit, planning. they hit it out of the park. So uh, with that being said, we'll start to wrap up this segment. I'll cover some other updates uh, I did want to remind everyone that with doing it in the dark coming up, uh, a good friend of ours, Feltham Fab, that's F E L T H A M underscore Fab, please go out and follow the big homie. Mike and I talked about it last episode. He is teaming up with us, 
and we are giving away an award at each of these different shows that we'll be attending this year. And the award that he did for After Dark was off the, it was really off the chain, or excuse me, for Orange Beach Invasion. It was off the chain, and I know he's kind of cooking up some new stuff. So Feltham Fabrication, good dude. He's here in Florida, Deltona area. You'll see his bio photo. It, um, it's got some green and purple in there, and he's got some pretty cool things that he's doing. So hit him up for all your needs uh, when it comes to either awards or these different tumblers, I think they're called. I call them Yetis. Uh, that's good branding from Yeti. But, um, yeah, man, Ruben, it's always a pleasure, man. I'm glad that you made it out there with Cherie and your son. You guys got back safe and sound, and you managed to send a lot of photos over, which we'll be sharing this week. You know, from uh, ODB and Biggity Mike, the mayor, we appreciate your loyalty and uh, for you always uh, kind of sticking with uh, our lifestyle, the podcast, my brother. All right, man. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it, man. You're, uh, you're welcome anytime, my brother. Have a great week, and we'll talk soon. All right. Hey, thanks so much, Ruben. So it's really with heavy hearts, man, that uh, you guys know I'm a huge hip-hop fan. And, uh, gosh, maybe about three hours ago, I was out uh, hustling with the homie Tony Boss Bolin. You know, you guys know he's one of my good friends. We, uh, I met up with him earlier to do uh, to try to help him on his 53 Buick a little bit. Basically, he's going to uh, swap the motor. He had some motor problems. Really, before he bought the car, the motor had been really, really overheated. And it was like, look, let's just put a different motor in it. So before I even got there, he had already pulled the motor out himself. I'm like, damn, dude, like, come on. So we pulled the car up on this big pad that they have so that uh, we can do a little bit more work to it. And that was really the easy part. He's got a forklift, and we drug that car around. So we basically went over to the homie Joe's shop, and we were picking up the other motor that he sold him. Well, we get about halfway back, and I look on Twitter, and I'm like, no fucking way. So one of the West Coast, like, I'll call him up-and-comers. He was 33 years old, man. Nipsey Hustle. So his name's a little different. N-I-P-S-E-Y Hustle. H-U-S-S-L-E. I've been following Nipsey Hustle since like the beginning of his career. If you look back and you go on Spotify or Apple Music or you just Google, he's got, you know, he he had this whole like series that he did, like the marathon. The marathon continues, and then for several years. He was hinting at his album, his like official, you know, album that was going to drop was going to be called Victory Lap. And it dropped, I think it was maybe late 2017. And man, it just was like very very successful and I think he went on to sign a deal with Puma. He uh he was really an up and comer. I mean, he even got on that um if you guys haven't listened to Victory Lap, go out there and listen to it. He's got Kendrick Lamar on it. You know, he's done tracks in the past with YG, Drake, Rick Ross, The Game. Dude, so many people, right? And um, my homie Dar, who I've known for a little over 20 years, you know, we were big music fans, especially West Coast hip-hop. You know, he moved from uh, that area and, you know, turned me on to a lot of artists over the years. And, uh, you know, like The Game from West, you know, Nipsey, so on and so forth. So about a year ago, Actually, a year ago in April, so a year ago, we went and we saw Nipsey Hussle because like a couple years prior to that, he came to Tampa after a Miami show, and for whatever reason, it got canceled. Uh, I don't know if it was just, you know, a lot of people on, in Tampa don't really support, you know, West Coast hip-hop like that, and I don't know if they just didn't sell enough tickets. The rumor at the venue that night was, you know, the security wasn't right, or, you know, who knows, right? So it kind of was like a little sour, you know, it was like, I mean, really... You know, you got this whole deal going on, the marathon, and then, you know, you cancel. And so we're like, whatever. So a year or two later goes by, and he was coming back. So we went and we saw him, and the show was good. You know, I wasn't sure that he was going to show up or that it was even going to go down. So we had, you know, bought the early tickets, you know, in advance. So we went and saw him, and, man, I was right up there, and, you know, I was jamming out. He played some of his newer songs off Victory Lap. But earlier today to see breaking news that he was shot outside of his clothing store, which was uh, the Marathon clothing store, right there in Compton. You know, the homie Dar, when he went and visited uh, Cali, 
I don't know, six months ago, he went to the store and, you know, he was checking it out and whatnot. Dude, it's it's just so senseless, man. It really is. And when you're an artist like that, especially a younger artist, because, you know, a lot of us are getting a little bit older and you start to see, you know, the, there's a lot of younger artists that I just, I, I, I don't vibe with, you know. I, you guys know I listen to a lot of the music that I listened to growing up. But for, like, Nipsey Hussle, you know, there were some songs I, you know, wasn't the biggest fan of, but, man, his vibe, he was real positive. Uh, everything that I've read on Twitter and over the years, man, like, he was, you know, and he even says in one of his songs, you know, he wants to build community centers and he wants to invest in the community and nobody's going to ever argue with that. And He just had, like, this unbelievable vibe. So to see on Twitter that him and two other people were gunned down, there was, like, 30 minutes of suspense, like, there, you know, there was a couple rumors saying that he was dead, but no one had said anything. And uh, about thirty minutes, literally, you know, we're still driving, and I look, and I had texted my homie Dar, and he texts me back, and he goes, "Dude, he's he's dead." And I just, I, it's just mind blowing. It really is. And then, you know, right right around then, you know, it it's trending as the number one topic on Twitter. And um, you know, like I said, you know, we're not all into the same shit, you know. Uh, some of us are into hip hop, some of us into, you know, sports, some of us are into trucks a hundred percent, but you know, whatever you're into, man, you got to just keep the pedal stomped. I mean, I know that he did, but for him to pass, man, I mean, he truly was, you know, he referred to himself as Dipsy Hustle the Great. And, um, it's just, it's such a shocker. So I, I, I just, I don't know what to say. And, um, you know, all over Twitter and I'm sure Facebook and I know Instagram, man. I mean, there's people posting really, really, really good, uh, you know, photos and just, you know, a lot of love for Nipsey Hussle. So uh, that's all I got to say, man. It's it's crazy, and I'll be bumping his music all week. If you've never checked it out, check out Victory Lap and uh, also check out The Marathon Continues. Uh, it's one of the greatest mixtapes, especially for the, uh, the West Coast artist. And uh, Crenshaw is another good one. Uh, there's one called The Leaks, Volume 1, uh, Extra Laps, the, and, um, you know, even his original, The Marathon Man, he's got a truck on there with Game, and, man, they're they're straight from straight from the hood, man. And uh, I guess the motto, you live by the gun, you die by the gun, but it's just really unfortunate. And apparently, the only other thing I'll say is apparently he was working on some documentary that was going to talk a little bit about a doctor that supposedly – said he could cure or he knew a cure to AIDS back in 1985 and then the guy was killed. So, I mean, I'm not the huge, most conspiracy theorist type person, but it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this if they if they catch the people or whatever happens. So, crazy, 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 Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle the Great, rest in peace. So, speaking of hip-hop, uh, it's not easy to change subjects after talking about something like that. Ice T. So you guys know Ice T. He's a legend. I just saw this week that uh, SVU was picked up for another season. I think it's like the longest running drama series in TV history or something like that. But, you know, he is definitely a legend. A lot of people will tweet to him and they'll talk a little bit about different albums dropping. And uh, I think it was March 31st, 1992, the album the self-titled album Body Count was released. And, uh, you know, it was very controversial. I don't really want to talk too much about, you know, there's one song on there that most of you guys know that was later pretty much banned. So the album was re-released without that track on it. Man, Ice-T is a legend, whether you love him or hate him. He uh, is someone that I've always kind of respected. He has continued to just really maintain and... I, I've uh, went on YouTube and I've watched a couple different podcasts. One of the guys was able to go up to his house and did a, I don't know, hour and a half, two hour podcast. If you're interested in it, let me know. I'll try to find it in my YouTube history. But man, he is, uh, he's a legend and it's pretty damn cool. And I mentioned in the past that he's actually liked a couple of our photos. I've tagged him in Mike Miller photos or Mike Miller photography. And I'm hoping still to have Mike Miller on. He has photographed a lot of artists, including album covers, including Ice-T. So uh, Body Count Band on Twitter. But uh, there goes the neighborhood, of course, back in 92 when they dropped the self-titled album Body Count. Okay, next, 
really the big update for the podcast was since I wasn't able to make it out to Forbidden, you guys know that, I said, you know what, let me do this. Let's get on with Ruben. Let's get on with someone that was there, boots on the ground, and we did so, and we talked a little bit about the show. Uh, I really you know, hate that I missed it this year. I mean, it was a personal decision, as I mentioned. I know the homie Chuck Dog from down south. He was out there. He was representing. I'll tell everyone, just you know, go out there, check out the photos, show Forbidden Fantasy some love. Follow them at FFF underscore show on Instagram. Now, last week, we dropped a surprise pre-order on everyone. So Mike and I kind of had been working on putting out another shirt, but we kind of wanted to go more of a branding type with this shirt, and that's what we did. And we've had some orders come in, and we certainly appreciate the Airhead Nation. You know, folks like Adam Tripp, uh, Tim Gilbert, we gave a big shout out to last episode. Sick Pups, make sure you follow them on Instagram. Billy the Kid, Anthony D I A N D A, uh, Chris Caruso, yeah man, ordered a couple shirts. You got John Moore, of course. We're gonna be talking to him soon, and really looking forward to talking about Lomigo. I think you guys are gonna start seeing that famous truck a lot more. So I'm super stoked. Want to also give a huge shout out to Chaos Design, K H A O S Design, all together. Uh, she was on prior, and uh, we shared a photo uh, late last week of her badass Toyota pickup. She actually had a cool post earlier on Instagram. She mentioned Australia's first bed dancer. This dual cab Hilux turns heads, hitting switches down the street of Melbourne. So super badass there. And then someone I met at the Hell Track event, it's uh, Poor Boy Steve, P-O-O-R-B-O-Y-S-T-E-E-V. He actually shared the photo of the Ford Ranger with the BMX bike in the back. It's owned by Rad Joe 74 and that's a Joseph Cantu. Super badass mini, and of course, minis are on the rise. That uh, badass photo, epic colorway of the bike and the truck. It had uh, almost 800 likes. So uh, show poor boy Steve some love. Go out there and uh, follow him and let him know that OLP sent you. All right, last but not least, we've got the all-time low magazine. This is Minis taking over featuring Matt Daly's badass Nissan pickup on the cover. This is issue 17, February 2019. It's important that if you... Love the magazine as much as we do. Go out there and subscribe. Yes, you can still subscribe to the 2019 uh, subscription. It's six issues. That is going to make sure that you don't forget to order. Oh, by the way, they have sold out before. They continue to sell out. So if you are subscribed, that helps them with their planning of how many do we need to up? How many more do we need to print? Versus they print X. They have X for sale, then you don't get one. These magazines are epic, and as I mentioned on the last episode, they also come in a sealed bag, so the weather will not destroy them. All right, so high level, you've got Scraping the Coast, so June 21st through the 23rd, 2019. That's Biloxi, Mississippi. That's the first ad you're going to see. You've got other ads in here as well. You've got the Table of Contents. We roll into airing it out, and this is by Beth Waterman. Very, very cool that she writes this editorial uh, for this month. And she, in the last paragraph, she said, we are constantly working with some of the biggest, baddest people and companies in the scene to constantly improve what we do, like including sections with Jason ODB Ballard with our lifestyle, the podcast, and more. Let's be honest, if you... Yeah, ain't first, you're last, end quote. Dude, thanks for the love there. Don't forget atlmagazine.com. So you have coverage, The Sparks Show, photos by Michelle Boone, and words by Rich Waterman. The coverage is fantastic. Not only does it have Jeff's Mazda in here, but you've got C30 Dooley's from Acrophobia. You've got a 68 Lincoln from the guy Clint that we know. Uh, crew cab Nissan Frontiers, crew cab Chevrolets, VWs, very, very cool, uh, clear, clean coverage. Super sick. So very 
badass feature here, which is Watermelon Crawl. And this Nissan Frontier is super sick. It's rocking billets. And the outside of the truck is badass. Reminds you of a watermelon. And then the inside is all red with a billet steering wheel. This feature is um, about four pages long. And, uh, you know, really big ups to the magazine for putting out this awesome quality. Adam Johnson had the photo and words here. And the owner is Benji Hardless. So then we roll into Frontline, Heart of a Skyline. So you got a Nissan Frontier extended cab. So again, something different. They, they're they willing to go a little bit different with the paint on it. Almost reminds me of like graffiti type paint. The owner is Jason Clark. It's an O2 Nissan Frontier. And photos by Brent Hudgens, the big homie. And Rich Waterman did the write-up. Got Sparks in the Ozark. Another awesome layout. Uh, really loved the photos here that were taken by Damian Davis. What's cool is you've got everything from a Cadillac to some old school customs. You've got a van that's body dropped from our friends over there in Texas. And then you've got also a Nissan Xterra. Three photos in there. It looks like it's rocking an LS motor. You turn the page and you're met with another page and a half of show coverage, including our lifestyle, the podcast ad. Next, you got Tacoma Toast. Pretty cool name there. Extended cab Tacoma green with black wheels. This is a photo and write up by Adam Johnson. The owner is Josh Ann and Dakota Holt. Reppin' RA. Okay, SEMA show. It's not just East Coast. With All Time Low Magazine, you guys know they're repping the West. They're really repping worldwide. Let's be honest. You got photos here of Kristen Sneed and Sherry Del Godolo. I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. But everything in here from the Flow F100 to Suburbans to C10s, you name it. It's a really, really good mix of everything from SEMA. Uh, you, you know, you've even got uh, indoor photos here. You've got the outdoor photos, of course. Again, a real good mix. And for them to squeeze their SEMA coverage into four pages is not easy. But when I look at it, the different colors, you got a couple minis as well out there. It, it really just reinforces that the quality you get with this magazine. Okay, the text section, Cambered Corner. So here uh, we're, we're looking at uh, some control arms and kind of fixing the camber in uh, a badass full-size truck. You've got hammered weekend wear. We feature real builds ad. And then biggity boom, against all odds, like Tupac said, Matt Daly. Love the two-page layout. Chad Donahue, okay, C12 Productions. He has the photo credit here. Words by Rich Waterman. Man, this truck is awesome. We had Matt on from Scraping the Coast last year. The interior's on point. He's rocking the Viair compressors, hard line system. Paint looks great, super clean. Great job, Chad, at C12. You've got another ad here, including After Hours. Don't forget that's July 13th, 2019, from 4 to 10 at Hank Aaron Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. Okay, Sparkling Edge. Dude, this Nissan is awesome. Extended cabs on the rise. Super badass. Kind of like a, I don't know, I'll call it a silver paint. Real nice graphic. This thing is badass. Photos and words by Chuck Healy. And the owner, uh, this one is an overseas, if I remember correctly, feature. An 86 Nissan 720 King Cab. I am going to butcher this name, but it's K-O-J-I. Uh, Kato, K-A-T-O. Okay, Slamber Party. Yes, awesome coverage here. You've got DJ Gitlow. We're going to have him on soon. you got his famous van there and a cool photo of him there behind the ones and twos. You've got a, a photo of Greg Miller. Now, this Slamber Party was a show that Greg threw for many years, and he brought in a lot of different people. They love the camp. They love Slam vehicles. So why not call it Slamber Party? What more can you say when you look at the showgrounds here? It was an epic show. 
for anyone that got a chance to attend. I know you guys loved it. This show coverage is on point. And oh, by the way, it was by Michelle Boone and Misty Jacob. All right, Sick Nick. Sparkles Detail, they sponsor Sick Nick. Yes, August 24th to the 25th. That's 2019. Gonzalez with an S, Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center. All right, Killer Jam, this super sick Toyota. It's black, and, man, it has like a reddish interior. This is a a guy overseas. His uh, name is T-S-U-B-A-S-A. D-E-N-S-O, a 96 Toyota Hilux. This feature is super, super sick, and it's by Chuck Healy. And, uh, oh, yeah, I see the all-time low magazine sticker on the back windshield. That's pretty badass. Okay, Truck Masters, Tokyo Final. So we had been hearing that there's going to be more and more worldwide coverage. And for Chuck Healy to knock this one out of the park, with a cool layout and awesome photos, the whole team at All Time Low Magazine is killing it. There's even a Suburban in there with all clear windows, billet wheels, and a crazy billet front grille. I love it. I love seeing uh, the show coverage from uh, Japan simply because these guys are crazier than we are. They're building some really cool stuff, and they've got a lot of love and passion for the whole America scene and what we do with the minis on the rise. Okay, eye candy. You have an extended cab, Chevrolet, blue color, super sick interior, two suicide doors, an old dash. That's really reminiscent of the dash that I have in Bada Bing. It, uh, from the looks of it, it looks like an Etzel type Ford dash. This is owned by Terry Huckabee. And Adam Johnson shot the feature and did the write-up. And then, check this out, Das Ute. You got that right, D-A-S-U-T-E. This is by Sherry Del Gadalo. Maybe I said it right there. And this owner is Chris Kingston, a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta Ute. And that club is AZ Dimes. It's definitely something different. And this is something like a vehicle that I saw when I was in Belize and Honduras and things like that. You don't see a lot of these around, at least I don't. And it's kind of cool to see something different. Okay, then you have Coming Soon. So, you know, you get to see Orange Beach Invasion, which we just had. Uh, Forbidden Fantasy, Sparks in the Park, Southeast, Mini Truck and Nationals. Mike will be there. And uh, pretty cool stuff. Reader Rides. So, you got the Haho. Newfound Youth and Serenity. And then, of course, Off the Wall. It's always cool to see the photos that they throw into the magazine. You've even got Fester from down south Florida here doing his impression of the Super Bowl halftime show. It's pretty crazy. Oh, you also have a mini tattoo in here as well. Very, very cool stuff. And I see the homie Matt, it looks like. I could be wrong from over there in the Orlando area. Reppin' 407, dude. The back cover, thank you so much for paying homage to us where it says Japan on the rise. We, of course, got that from the homie Tony Boss Bolin. This issue is straight fire, and I would say go pick it up. Buy an extra issue. Remember, they come with a pull-out poster. There's something on each side, so if you like the vehicles enough, you can buy two issues or have the subscription. Buy another issue. That way you'll have both posters, so to speak. So with that being said, we hit you guys with a surprise episode for this Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Big ups to All Time Low Magazine, Hammered Weekend Wear, Custom Car Show Productions, including Scraping the Coast. That's the next big one up, y'all. Sparkles Detail. Visit sparklesdetail.com or have them clean your ride at one of the number of shows that they attend nationwide. Viera Corp, big ups to Morgan and the entire team. We see you guys. Stay on the rise. And Felt Ham Fab, as I mentioned earlier in the prod as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, make sure you follow Felt Ham Fabrications on Instagram. That's Felt Ham with an F underscore F A B. Okay, we're going to do a couple of the reviews. We're up to 114. We appreciate that. If you have an iPhone, it's really easy to leave a review. You just scroll down in the podcast's app, 
And uh, it's pretty simple. You'll tap hopefully five stars, and then you can type in a review as well. But on the last episode, we gave a huge shout-out to Tim Gilbert. Thank you so much. He says, this is the first podcast, and I wish I checked it out sooner. I drive all over Florida and South Georgia, occasionally listening to all the episodes. Now he's caught up. He was on episode 115. So like Stoop said, quote, I'm going to chill to the next episode. Yes, man. That is so awesome. And we saw your order come in. Thank you so much. That's at N-C-S-T-A-T-I-K-X-T-R-A cab. Think N-C static extra cab. Dude, he stays on the rise. Okay, next you got Dooley Greg. If you're not following Dooley Greg on Instagram, you're missing out. That's D-U-A-L-L-Y-G-R-E-G-G. OLP is for mini truckers by mini truckers. If you want to be kept current on anything in the scene, whether it's today or 20 years ago, OLP is all you need. Guests have included a lot of OGs um, who were pioneers in the scene. Where else are you going to hear stories from Bob Grant, Dave Shulman, Max Fish, Craig Frazier, Mike Finnegan, Ruben Artiaga, Ernie Macias, Lonnie Ford, Todd Hendricks, just to name a few, and I know they've got a lot more to come. Proud to be a part of the hashtag Airhead Nation. Keep the hustle strong, fellas. I'm at ya. We see you, man. Now, yes, I did read that one before, but it was so good I had to read it again. I had to give the guy a shout-out. He's a huge supporter of not only the podcast but the scene. He is posting some of the coolest things. And as, as I mentioned before, I thought I was good at kind of puzzling and plastering the stories together and – you know, this truck turned into this truck. Dude, this guy runs circles around me. He's really, really good. We got to have him on. Make sure you hit him up and tell him, yo, we need you on OLP like yesterday. So with that being said, Airhead Nation, hit you guys with a mini truck and motherfucking Monday. You guys have a great week, and we are still going to drop a show this Friday. You know how we do. We come out swinging so fast we make your head spin or something Eminem said. We appreciate y'all. We at you. Peace. Teachers moving forward with speed, all your morals are lead. Only focus is cheese, now the forest is trees. Got infected with greed, distort what you see. Your worst nightmare to need is justify your means. Hold